What is going on guys? Welcome back to the free trading game collection. The series is linked in a playlist in the description. So check that out if you want. Now into the comment section. In the last episode of this series, I mentioned that I like playing shorter games in amongst the longer ones. So I'm looking for sort of four to eight at a push hour gameplay sort of single player campaigns. And someone mentioned Dead or Alive. I'm no stranger to the Dead or Alive series. I've played a fair few. Um, was, is it Dead or Alive Extreme? The, the really weird one, Extreme Volleyball 2 or something crazy. I've played that quite a lot. I don't know why, but either way, I've played Dead or Alive games in the past and they are enjoyable. And I do like the sort of one-on-one -on -one beat em up style of games, Mortal Kombat being my absolute favorite. But I've had this game that I'm about to show you on my shelf for about two months, possibly even longer. See, what happens is I accumulate things over time and I'm just looking for a way to introduce them into certain episodes. If I showed you everything at once, it would leave me with no content for the next episode. And some things I can't show you without having other things because it just wouldn't make any sense. My point is, I bought Dead or Alive 5 on the Xbox 360 for three quid a long time ago. I don't know how much that costs these days. It may have gone up, it may have gone down. And it is in very good condition. That manual has never been opened. The disc is fantastic. And shorter games are made even better on the Xbox 360 because I have very, very limited time with my 360 unless I take it downstairs where I play most of my games. But in the game room, uh, games I tend to not sort of spend that much time on. So Mega Drive games you can pop in for 20 minutes. Xbox 360 games I can chuck on for half an hour or something. This is going to be right up my street there. So very, very happy to pick it up. And it was just mad ironic that that was the game that he popped in the comments. And I'd been waiting to introduce it at some point. So there it is. I will deduct £3 from the cash balance of this series. That is going to deplete quite a lot before we can actually improve it. So I'm sat there and I'm perusing Facebook and I see an Xbox One controller, just a bog standard white controller for, I think it was 15 quid. So I send him a message and I say, would you take tenner? He says, perfectly working condition, yes I will. And then five minutes later, sends me a message and he says, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry, I forgot that I've already promised this to someone and he's coming to pick it up in a minute. So when that happens, I get really frustrated, but rather than be angry, send them a crappy comment or block them or whatever, I say, hey, no worries. If you get any more stuff, let me know. Well, instantly he sent me back a message and he said, I do have this controller, but it's untested. It was a Series 2 Elite controller. And we know, we all know how expensive Pro and Elite controllers are. So I said, how much do you want? And he said, same 15. And I said, well, will you do 10 as it's untested? And he said, yes. I think I may need to invest in a Rode mic or something so you can actually hear me when I'm talking. Um, I picked it up, I've had a quick look at it and I'll tell you what, it's either a power issue, like it just doesn't charge, or there's nothing wrong with this because it looks pretty damn nice before I attempt to make my way back with this. Um, yeah, I thought that was maybe where the rubber had come away, but it's just a, an extension. That is a super extension. I haven't taken them off yet, but they look good underneath anyway. All the buttons look good. There's no like sticky buttons or anything. That is clear. The type C is clear as well. And the back paddles and everything look good. So I need to get this home. I need to see if it charges. So if you watched one of my recent videos, I mentioned when someone says untested and you can't confirm whether it works or not, you have to assume it doesn't. So faulty Elite Series 2 controllers sell for like 25, 30 quid, depending on what's wrong with them. So for me to spend 10 quid here, my money's safe. And in fact, I'm probably still gonna make a profit even if it's completely dead. Much to my surprise though, initially anyway, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Uh, of course, you can't put batteries in it. You have to charge it via the, uh, the, the charge port on the top or put it in the dock so the two pins on the back can charge it. So I plugged it into the PC, seemed to work initially, and then there seemed to be some sort of connection issue. So when, you know, like you have a phone you've used for a long time or even a controller, for example, and you plug it in and it works and then you move the wire and then it just goes off. Well, yeah, that was the issue. So there was a loose connection. I don't know whether it may, may have been a bent pin or, or anything. I don't know what, I'm not an expert, right? So 
The problem there is that you can't play it wired. So if you do want it for a PC, for example, you can't really do it because it doesn't connect via Bluetooth because it's an Xbox controller. The connection is dodgy, so it's not going to work. So I had to then take it to my brother's house and test it with his console. It connected wirelessly, no problem. He had a little dock for his Elite controller, so I put it on there to see if it charged and it did so the two back pins work perfectly. So as far as I could tell, the only thing wrong with it was the charge port until I tried to play a game. Left bumper, completely unresponsive, not even a hard press would work. So back to the game room I went, I took it apart and I gave it a really good clean with isopropyl alcohol. And much to my surprise, that worked. The left bumper button worked perfectly well then, even light presses were working well. So yeah, I would managed to fix that issue. So the only thing wrong with this now was a loose connection. It's still charged, you just have to leave it there on the side. If you move the wire, it would then go off and come back straight on again. But still, when you're playing a game, no bueno. When you're charging it, absolutely fine. Stuck it up on eBay, didn't expect to get anywhere near what I got for it but yeah I sold it for like 55 60 quid I forget what it was it was a little while ago now so on screen you're seeing how much I sold that for so 10 pound into whatever it was after fees that is a pretty good deal but not as good as the deal he then gave me a few weeks later so a couple of weeks goes by he then contacts me about that wee bundle buy that sort that out sell bits of that off keep what I want etc a couple more weeks goes by and I send him another message just out of the blue. Hey, have you got anything? Because he did have some Xbox One games up. And, you know, they were decent. He wanted about 20 quid. I think it was about £28 in credit. He dropped it to 15 And I was like, oh, I could maybe double my money here, but uh, I won't bother. I'll send him a message anyway, though, and I'll say, look... If you've still got these in a couple of days and you want to get rid of them, I'll give you a tenner. And he said, oh, someone's coming to pick them up now, unfortunately. But he then sent me another message. And this is why I love this guy, because he does it all the time. He said, but I do have this. And then he sent me a picture for this Xbox One console. Well, 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 I cannot seem to get rid of this thing. So if you remember... I bought one of these off my brother quite a long time ago, 50 quid with a controller, which I thought was a decent deal. This didn't come with a controller. It, it has been opened as far as I can tell on the back. I th someone not put it back properly because there is a, a little bit of a loose connection or a pin somewhere because it is sliding slightly. And that obviously says void on it, so it has been opened. It's not in the best of conditions. It is quite grubby, but came with a power supply. I've plugged it in. And we do have uh, an Xbox One controller, of course, because I bought one for like two quid or five quid when I fixed it. And it works. Plugged it all in, hooked it up. This works perfectly well. And it actually came with a secret disc. It was WWE 2K16 with Austin on it, of course. I found a couple more bits might be all right. Sure. Oh. Done. It's like stuff in all. Yeah. Right, okay. okay. I'll give That's you 40 for it all, all right? All right, cheers. Thank you. Which you're thinking... You've overpaid there, mate. It's not in good condition. It has been opened. You can't trade it. Didn't come with a controller. You're not going to profit from that. And no, you're absolutely right. I'm not. See, we agreed on the Xbox, but we also agreed on a few games as well. But he actually gave me a few things at the door, which you can maybe hear in the audio, that I wasn't expecting. The first of which was this Xbox 360 AV lead, which doesn't really go for an awful lot, but when you combine it with an Xbox 360 power supply, maybe 8 to 10 quid there, all tested, all working, which was nice. That was basically free on top. We agreed on a bunch of games, one of which isn't an Xbox game, and in fact, this is the oldest game I've had in my possession for quite a long time. This is an Amiga game, boxed in pretty good condition actually action service on the Amiga it looks horrendous on the back and apparently it was 4 99 at the time it was sold I don't know what year this is from but it must be 1928 or something of that nature but um that is worth between 10 and 15. He also threw in a couple of games I wasn't expecting. So the first of which is just disc only Metro Last Light on the 360. Nothing to write home about. I will probably bundle this with a 360 if I ever get one to sell in the future. He also threw in Gears of War 3, which I don't think we have. 
In fact, we don't have. We don't have any Gears of War on the 360, which is a little bit weird. This isn't expensive. It is complete. It's in good condition. Wasn't going to say no. He also threw in Call of Duty Black Ops. I remember playing the ever-loving death out of the multiplayer of this game. But I tell you what, and not necessarily for this one in particular, but... I have had a real hankering, if you will, to go and play some single-player Call of Duty campaigns. There are some in mind that I really want to play. This isn't one of them. But I may start to just pick up the odd Call of Duty game here or there, and this may be a theme. But those two, thrown in for free. And that brings me to the games that I also got in this bundle. Now, bear in mind that if I can sell what I have already projected then this owes me around 15-ish quid. We'll say 20 to be on the conservative side. But of course, we've already made money from that Elite controller, which is now paid for this, and we can put some cash back into the series, which is nice. So this is now all free, effectively. I've adjusted the figures for you on screen. That's how much the Elite controller gave me in profit after I took out all the fees, the amount I paid for it, and what's left over for this Xbox One bundle. They do get a little bit better as it goes on. There's nothing amazing in here, but some pretty decent titles. First of which is NBA 2K18. Not amazing, but still, I I don't understand basketball. I mean, I understand the basic premise of it, but I've never really tried to play a, a basketball game outside of NBA Jam on the uh, Mega Drive. So that'll be interesting to go back and try it. I won't dwell on this, NBA 2K19. Neither of those trade in for anything, so we will keep them. Certain sports titles I'm really not happy to keep. To be fair, NBA, NHL, and maybe the odd Madden game, I'm quite happy to keep because I will pop them in every now and again and play them. And I don't need to play the latest and greatest. I'm happy to go back and play 18, 19, 20, whatever it may be. The next game is a game that I've always wanted to play, but the multiplayer aspect of it just puts me off. It's The Division. Again, it doesn't trade for anything, so we will keep this. But uh, yeah, it requires an internet connection. There isn't a single player campaign. I would like some explanation as to how I play this though, please, because I've looked it up and I still don't understand. So there is no single player campaign. You are online, but at the same time, you can play through it by yourself. If you've played this and you know how it works, I want to play it as single player as possible. Let me know. I know there's no actual single player campaign, but can I play this without much of anyone's help? We need to get this at some point. It is Halo 5. Uh, Guardians, obviously. Uh, the only Halo game I have ever played is Halo 3, and I actually enjoyed it for what it was, to be fair. That was a really good game. So why I've never really played more of them, I don't know. But if you've played that, let me know what it's like in the comments, because that will go into the collection. To be fair, every game you see here is going into the collection. I'm going to explain what I'm about to do in a second. Then we have a bit of a theme, and I have mentioned this already in this video, but here we go. In no particular order... We have Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, my god they were getting creative with these names, a game that gets shat on quite a lot but I actually really enjoyed, Call of Duty Ghosts, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, this next one completely passed me by, didn't play this at all, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. This next one is in quite poor condition. The case is completely shattered on the bottom and the artwork isn't great. It is, you've guessed it, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That actually trades for a little bit. I would say I'd be tempted to trade it, but I'll explain that in a minute. The last game from this bundle, but not from the video, is going to be Call of Duty World War II. Now this, this, this. I had this, but I had it on PC and I didn't like it. And the reason I didn't like it is because I am a salty noob and they didn't have aim assist up until... I mean, they, they have it now. I'm pretty sure you can go and play it now with aim assist, but they didn't have it when I played it. So trying to play with a controller with no aim assist against PC players with mouse and keyboard, I was getting slaughtered and I didn't enjoy it. Why didn't I play mouse and keyboard? I don't know. It just felt unnatural to play Call of Duty with a mouse and keyboard. Even though, to most, I know it's not unnatural and that's the way you've always played Call of Duty and it is the best experience. I play a lot of games or have done on PC. My favourite game of all time is Rust. 
it's a PC game. You can't get it. Well, now you can, I suppose, on console. But I play that mouse and keyboard absolutely fine. I consider myself to be quite good at it in terms of uh, combat, well, aiming anyway. But um, yeah, I don't know why Call of Duty can't really play mouse and keyboard. It just doesn't feel right. Anyway, my point is, that's a lot of Call of Duty games, right? So this one, I love, as you know, World War II content. But I haven't played the single player of this. So I popped it into the console and I started playing. And I thought, right, I can keep this Xbox One because it doesn't owe us anything anymore because we've already paid for it with the Elite controller and the cash we had, blah, blah, blah. So I could keep the Xbox One up here and play games up here. My PlayStation 5 and now my Switch is downstairs and that's where I play most of my sort of settle down for the night kind of games. Up here though, I can have a quick blast of, of a level of Call of Duty or a game on NBA or a level of Halo or whatever it may be and I can enjoy it for what it is up here. There is WWE 2K16, by the way. That was the mystery disc that came in the console. I took it out because I was playing uh, World War II, but uh, there it is. Total trade value of all that is on screen for you, and it's actually quite impressive for what I've had there. We've had an Xbox One before. I've already mentioned this, and I sold it. I sold it for quite a lot of money as well, actually. It was a really good deal on my end. Um, I bought it for 50 came with the, the controller and everything, and then eventually decided that I just didn't want it anymore, and I sold it. And I changed my mind like the wind. We had a PS3 at one point, and I sold it because I decided I was never going to play games on it. Well, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't know, I'm growing into the culture of collecting, but I'm also growing into the gaming culture a little bit more as well. Over time, I will look to swap out my Xbox One console with an Xbox One X, or indeed a Series X. Now, a Series X is very expensive right now, and to be fair, there's likely to be a revision at some point in the future. Maybe that will result in a price drop. Who knows? But for now, anyway, I'm happy to just trundle along with my uh, my Xbox One as it is. And over time, if I'm able to upgrade it to a better console, a slightly more powerful console, I will do that. But for now, that Xbox One console will quench my thirst for Xbox games. And now we're back in the market. I am not ruling out, by the way, doubling up and double dipping on some games. I ruled it out before. I didn't understand it, but I've mentioned it more than once now. I Now I understand. I want to play a game that I own on the PS4, but up here on the Xbox, different controller, different screen, different experience. Now I understand why people buy two copies the same game on different platforms. I do another pickup to show you. I do have footage of me looking through some sealed games from this guy, but I don't have footage of me picking it up, so you'll have to take it with a pinch of salt. This was a pound, and it was a long time ago. Uh, I'm talking summer last year, and for some reason, I, I put it in the wrong pile, and I'd completely forgotten I picked it up. It is NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 sealed. Now, I don't know whether I've shown you this before, but it has been in the wrong pile uh, on a shelf somewhere for some reselling side of things that, um, yeah, I don't know why I wasn't ever going to put it into the series. I just put it off to the side and completely forgot that it was there. It was out of sight, therefore out of mind, right? But I know that this cost me a pound. I don't have the original footage of me buying it, but the, the seller itself, I've hopefully already shown you if i didn't then it's been in other videos before but uh, yeah he wanted like one or two pound for like nearly all of his games most of them were either free to play or they were internet re like required type games that would just like servers have gone down or whatever this was the only uh, nba 2k playgrounds 2 that he had it was a pound and at the time i thought well i'll pick it up because it's got to be worth that I'm actually going to keep this now because this is the type of NBA game I can actually see myself enjoying. However, um, if I really wanted to sell it, I could probably get about, I don't know, seven, eight quid for it. But I'm going to keep it now that we have an Xbox. We are now starting a Call of Duty collection, not something I'm going to do on both platforms. However, I'm going to keep all of the games that you've seen on the Xbox One Um I would say for the time being, but I'll probably keep them forever now. They'll just go on the shelf and I'll look to get the other Call of Duties that I don't have because I think there are still a few and I will look to get them on the Xbox One as opposed to the PS4. To be honest, I can probably only see myself playing Call of Duty up here anyway. Although having said that, I do want to dive into the odd campaign. So World War II, for example, is a game I'll probably get on PS4 as well at some point. I know I'm difficult to keep up with, uh, I change my mind all the time uh, and I'm not saying 
that I'm going to do that again in the future and I'm going to sell the Xbox One and the PS3 and I'll change my mind. No, I don't want them. I probably will stick to my guns on this. But um, yeah, I do change my mind quite a lot with certain things and certain opinions I have will probably change as well. So be prepared for that. And I'm sorry if I frustrate people, but this is just the journey. This is what goes on in my mind not a bad day's work really um all those games going into the collection which is quite nice to see all paid for by the controller but of course we do still have the amiga game and the xbox 360 power supply that's going to get us a little bit more money as well so we've made money today added a console added a stack of games but we're not done there so unfortunately that Xbox Elite Series 2 controller is being returned. I had a message yesterday evening just as I was finishing up editing and the guy, in my opinion, hasn't read the description of this and he's claiming that there's a big stick drift issue. He said something about 30%. I've tested this and he also said that uh, he put it on PC to test and to play and he's had it over a week at this point. You can't connect it to the PC and have a stable connection to, to play with this thing longer than 20 seconds before it will move and it'll just disconnect, right? I can connect it long enough to test whether the left bumper works or if there's any stick drift or anything. I've cleaned it thoroughly. I have put a little mark on the underside of the cover as well. So I will know if this is a different controller, but I think he just hasn't read it properly and has decided that he wants to send it back and he doesn't want to look like an idiot, so he's claiming stick drift. Anyway, we'll see what happens when it gets returned, but uh, it does mean that I'm going to have to adjust the figures, so that is done for you right now. And the other thing, of course, is that we now have an Elite Series 2 controller that we can do whatever we want with. I didn't have an Xbox at the time, so now that I do, do I want to keep it? Maybe. I'll, I think I'll use it a little bit and see if I have any real desire to keep it and I'll just keep the one that you can't see behind me on display and then we'll just use the Elite controller to play games on. Uh, failing that, I could try and sell it again but I am worried that this is going to happen because people just don't read things properly. The amount of times I've sold things and then uh, they receive it and they're like, oh, this is wrong or this is discolored or this is this, this is that. And I'm like, yeah, it's all in the description but people just don't read it. They look one picture, they read the title, that's enough. So anyway, it's a shame but these things happen. So anyway, on with our final pickup. I am not a massive F1 fan by any stretch of the imagination. However, I do like playing the odd F1 game every now and again. <laughs> and I'm about to give it away with my next sentence. I love Football Manager with a passion. I will admit, though, that I haven't actually bought FM23. I saw there were a lot of problems with it. I don't have a crazy amount of time to be sat down by the PC. Maybe in the future I will get a laptop capable of running it so I can play it downstairs. That's for a different video. My point is, I bought a game on Vinted. It was super cheap, and I fancied it for a while, even though I'm not massively into F1, but I do like management games. It's F1 manager 2022 on the ps5 this was really cheap i think it's actually come down in price quite considerably in places like cex and even on amazon but um i got it cheaper than you can get it for brand new it's in very good condition and i'm gonna give it a go i've had this for quite a while but um and i still haven't played it but now's the time to show you why not let's just cap off the video with another pickup i have quite a few switch games to go into the collection over the next couple of episodes and i have an even better deal. Honestly, this deal coming up is incredible. Can't quite believe it myself. Wow. If you have enjoyed this one and you want to see more, you can click that video here. And until the next time, goodbye.